including Alex Jones, syndicated radio talk show host. I don't know who launched the chemical attack, but all the evidence leans towards the rebels having the motive to do it. And the Russians have put out a new report saying they have proof the rebels did it back in March of this year. Some people here and there amazingly have questioned the evidence of this assault on conscience. I repeat here again today that only the most willful desire to avoid reality can assert that this did not occur as described or that the regime did not do it. All right, so what kind of proof is there that the rebels would do this? I mean, the rebels supposedly are supporting the people of Syria. They would actually sacrifice their own people in order to draw America into this war to start World War III? Well, look, uh, the, the rebels are made up of jihadis, al-Qaeda, and some domestic Syrians, but around 60%, many studies show, are al-Qaeda, are jihadis. They've been wiping out whole Christian villages. So the, I don't think the rebels represent the Syrian people. I believe you will not deny the fact that uh, one hardly should back those who kills their enemies and uh, you know, eat their organs uh, and all that is filmed and shot. Do you want to support these people? Do you want to supply arms to these people? There's a growing volume of new evidence from numerous sources in the Middle East, mostly affiliated with the Syrian opposition and its sponsors and supporters, which makes a very strong case based on solid circumstantial evidence that the August 21st, 2013 chemical strike in the Damascus suburbs was indeed a premeditated provocation. I would not understand or comprehend that Bashar al-Assad, no matter how bad a man he may be, would be so stupid as to order right, We're going to stop that report there and fade it down because I want to get back to Gerald Salenti and hear what he has to say. I wanted to play part of that report for you. It's very important that you hear that report. You can go see the rest of that report on our YouTube channel, on the Alex Jones YouTube channel. That is what we have been telling you for a very long time. Today, of course, they come out and they say, after denying it for years, they come out and say, well, yeah, now we've got troops on the ground. It's not a problem. Look at this article that just came out. Uh, this was actually uh, today that we had an announcement from NBC saying defense officials are now confessing we have boots on the ground there. At the same time, there's a story that came out of McClatchy, D.C. that was linked on the Drudge Report that said talked about the process, a very long process of a guy named Tarhan Bayatrush Shivli, who's now known as Abu Omar al-Shashani, if I'm pronouncing his names correctly. He's now got a new name. He's now working with ISIS. He's now a leader in ISIS, like the guys that John McCain met with. You understand that if we'd gotten John McCain instead of Barack Obama, we would still be here today. And the only thing that delayed this is not the reluctance of Barack Obama to try to uh, step up the Syrian war, as the Republicans would claim. The only thing that delayed this was that we pointed out to you when they were doing these false flags with the sarin gas, we told you that was what was happening. And we had good people like Dennis Kucinich and others, Rand Paul, who said, we don't want to become the Air Force for Al-Qaeda or for ISIS. Again, we're here with the Money Bomb, the 28-hour special that we have to take InfoWars to the next level. We have free shipping on all the products at our store. We have 20% off Prostagard this hour. Uh, many other specials that you will find there that are running throughout the 28 hours. One of the biggest specials that's running throughout the 28 hours is free shipping. If you want to make a donation, you can call the operators at 888 253-3139. Again, that's 888-253-3139. I want to go back now to our guest, Gerald Salenti, with Trends Research. And I want to talk more about the movement that he is trying to do to get people focused on issues. We need to focus on issues. We need to act locally. We need to act at our local government level. We need to act at the state level. One of the things that Gerald says, if you go to OccupyPeace.us, he says you have to fight for peace. You have to fight for your rights. They're not going to give you peace. They're not going to give you your rights. You must fight for them. Thank you for staying with us this hour, Gerald. And, and tell us uh, again, tell us more about what is going to be happening this weekend is when you're kicking it off. Is that correct? Yes. Actually, tomorrow evening, we, we've, prior to the rally on Sunday, 
that is begins at high noon. And at that rally, uh, kicking it off is going to be Ralph Nader. And uh, we're also bringing in Cindy Sheehan, who, of course, you know, is an anti-war activist whose mm-hmm. son was in Iraq. And Dr. Robert Thurman, Uma Thurman's father, mm. and who's a peace activist as well. And Gary Null, who's really, uh, he does great movies, very, very big in health, fitness, and nutrition, a crusader in it, and, of course, an anti-war activist. And we're going to have marching bands, the whole thing, but not marching off to war, marching <laughs> for peace. So, so we're what, what, No presidential that. candidates, Gerald? Uh, we don't have Hillary Clinton there or Jeb Bush? Or <laughs> these people are not showing up for peace? I have to tell you, we have gotten we have gotten solicitations from politicians, and we won't allow any of them to come here. Good for you. Good for yeah, you. I People need to, to understand, and you're right about that, Gerald. People need to understand it's up to us. We're yes. not going to have these people do it for us. We have to get upset enough and active enough that we do it ourselves. We can't do it by proxy. They're not going to do it for us. They've got their own agenda. They've got their own interests. And you, you said it. Perfectly, because you paraphrase the quote of Samuel Adams. You know, we, we have to get upset. We have to fight for it. There's a wonderful quote. It does not take a majority to prevail, but rather an irate, tireless minority yes. keen on setting brush fires of freedom in the minds of men. Yes, they're setting it, brush fires of war. We need to set brush fires of freedom and peace. And we're doing it. You're yes. doing it. We're, and there are, enough, there are enough of us. And it goes back to one of, the, one of those great quotes. Yeah, if we don't hang together, surely we'll hang alone mm-hmm. by Franklin. So that's why we're doing this. And you were mentioning before about the boots on the ground. This is the article I was talking about earlier about oil prices. Potentially boosting oil was testimony from U.S. CENTCON commander General Lloyd Austin <laughs> confirming that U.S. Special Operation Forces troops are now on the ground in Syria assisting Kurdish forces in their fight against the Islamic State and other insurgents and, of course, doing their best to overthrow Assad. After they've been lying to us for three years, they now admit this. Three or four, I guess, four years now. And here's a story in today's... Toilet paper of record, uh, excuse me, paper of record, the New York Times, or as we would have said in the Bronx, toilet paper, new evidence in U.S. inquiry on ISIS data, top offices accused of skewing report or reports. A group of intelligence analysts have provided investigators with documents They say show that senior military officers manipulated the conclusions of reports on the war against the Islamic State. Really? And it goes on. (laughs) What a surprise, huh? Yeah, same MO from these guys that we see all the time. When we were covering 9-11... We had uh, reports from an ORAD general who said, well, actually, you know, the, the, what really happened is even more impressive than what we had in the official story. And I was like, well, why don't you tell us what you think really happened? I mean, they admit that they're lying to us. They admit that they won't tell us what's going on. But we knew what was going on. We talked to other people. We, we had uh, leaks from sources. We told you that this was happening in Syria for the longest time. And now, Gerald, they are admitting what we said all along. Yes, And again, why we're launching Occupy Peace on Sunday is to stop this march to war that we're going on. Because, And as you mentioned, I'll fight for peace, but I'm not going to die for war. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. I don't believe in it. And, you know, not especially, you know, going in another country to go for what? And by the way, we're in the buildup to the rally. We're having a conference. Actually, it begins tomorrow night with a reception over here. And Dr. Paul Craig Roberts is going to be here. And so the conference begins on Thursday evening, all day Friday, all day Saturday. Special speakers coming in to not only speak about peace and prosperity, but about trends, what we see developing, profit opportunities, things to avoid, where we see the markets going, 
a lot about artful aging. So we have a number of speakers. That's the conference. And then, of course, the rally is open to the public. And so the conference you could attend, of course, but that's different. But the rally is on Sunday. And again, it's at the four corners here. Anybody that wants to come, we need all the people we can get because this is just the beginning. This is the kickoff. This is the kickoff to Occupy Peace. And we are not going to stop until we bring it home, the prosperity and greatness that helped build this nation into the land of opportunity that's now become the nation of war. So that's in a... Well, that's a great idea, Gerald, and, and I really do support what you're doing, and I, I wish you the best of luck. I think it's a great idea. I'd encourage people to look at OccupyPeace.us, get more information about that. And uh, I want to talk to you because we're talking about war, what, what is building up to it. And, of course, a big part of what you do there as the publisher of Trends Journal is to look at economic trends, of course. And uh, tomorrow is the meeting of the Federal Open Market Committee. Everybody is waiting with bated breath as to whether or not Janet Yellen, the current head of this private central bank, is going to arbitrarily raise our interest rates or keep them at uh, zero where they've been inflating the stock market for a very long time. I want to get your, uh, your take on that real quickly. Again, this is the 2015 money bomb to try to get us to satellite television. This is going to go for 28 hours. We have free shipping at our store. If you want to make a donation, just a cash donation, you can do that at 888-253-3139. Tell us, Gerald, what you think is going to happen with the Federal Reserve tomorrow. You think they're going to uh, destroy the uh, bubble tomorrow, or are they going to perpetuate it with some more quantitative easing and continue the zero interest rates? Well, I just want to sum up what you will also refer to as a private bank, because yes. everything here is connected. Yes. I have six words that have destroyed America. Harvard, Princeton, Yale, bullets, bombs, and banks. Yeah, Let's go right. back to the question about the banks and the interest rates. The reason that we became a militaristic nation in a very large part was because of a guy from Princeton, the president, Woodrow Wilson. Mm, yes. He's the man that gave us the central bank, the Federal Reserve in 1913, and then sent us to World War I, a war that was over before we kept it going. Again, Harvard, Princeton, Yale, bullets, bombs, and banks. Yes. So now, here we are, a war-torn nation and going broke. What will they do tomorrow? Well, according to most of the analysts on the exchanges, rather than the economists, they're not going to raise them. But if they do raise them, they're only going to be raising them, what, 25 or at worst in their world, 50 basis points. So it really won't have much of an effect. Where the effect happens is that when they began this Ponzi scheme, beginning with too big to fail and TARP and then Obama's trillion dollar bailout program, that was going to rebuild America, what happened was tons of hot money flooded into all these emerging markets. The commodity boom happened. So what happened? You had all these countries like Brazil, Chile, Ghana, Bolivia, Colombia, tons of cheap money coming in. Now the whole economy starts growing again, commodity prices keep going up, but now commodity prices get down, according to the Bloomberg Index, to 16-year lows. Why this all ties into the rate raise? They borrowed that money in dollars. Now the commodities are crashing, and so too are the currencies of these nations. The latest report out is that for Brazil, for example, their currency has lost 40% against the dollar in a year. Mm. The rand over in Africa, the Turkish lira, you go around the world, the Canada, it's not so far away. They're, because of the oil crisis, the, uh, the, the commodity prices softening, 
They're now down to 2,004 levels against the dollar. The Aussie dollar down 20% around the world, going back